Thank you all for joining us for this call this morning for uh, Christian Camping International EcoCare. I'm really, really grateful for the good work that Anna Whitehouse has put into this program over the years. I joined in new at CCI in February, so this work was well underway. And I just want to continue to give support to it because I believe in it strongly. You know, Christian camping um, has such an impact on the world, as you know, in the way of sharing the gospel and bringing people into temporary community and establishing friendships for a lifetime. And most importantly, a friendship and a trust in our Lord Jesus Christ uh, for eternity. And in that um, amazing message, sometimes it gets lost or pushed down that God has created this world for us. And Anna's gonna be sharing a lot about that this morning. So your being here, you're on the, the Vanguard group, the, the lead out group on this. And so I just thank you uh, for putting that as a high priority in your ministry. What I wanna do is uh, open us up in prayer and then give us a, a few bits of information about how this seminar is going to run this morning and then we'll just jump right into things and I'm, we might have some others join us along the way and that would be great to see them but I want to make sure to give Anna the most time possible and you for some uh, questions at the end too that you might have. Well let's bring this before the Lord and we'll get started. Well, Father I thank you for this time together. Grateful for the leaders in this group here who love you and love this world that you've given us to enjoy and to care for. Um, it's it's the, um, a very, very important part of your story um, in your creation of us and in the home that you've given us and just the awe-inspiring beauty of it. And when we take care of it, it just keeps giving back. And when we don't take care of it, well, there are consequences for it. And um, that's not what you intended. So, Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for Christian Camping International, that collectively as a group, we can uh, value this planet. Because when we do that, we're, we're placing our value um, in you. This is all yours. And this is your handiwork. And we thank you for this opportunity to learn more and to encourage each other and to challenge each other in a positive way forward. We give this to you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, well this morning I'm going to be interviewing Anna and I have got some questions here that I think that will probably bring about answers that might be on your heart and mind. And if not, you can along the way just add some of your questions to the chat and we'll get to those. We'll save plenty of time at the end and we can go through those one by one. But I have a feeling that in our conversation, we're going to be covering a lot of ground that um, will address many of the questions you might already have. Hopefully that's the idea. Let's get started. Anne, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Um, I'll right. just add a thank you to you all for coming from me. It's really great to see a number of faces. And some of you I know, and some I don't know. And yeah, it's great to have you here. So thank you very much. Okay, well, very good. You know, let's, let's go ahead and just get right into things right here. Let's start with the most basic of questions of, you know, Anna, why is creation care important? Because, you know, surely those of us in Christian camping should be focusing on evangelism, right? Isn't that the main point? Well, that's a great question and a really important question to dig into. I don't have time here to give a really full answer, but if you want a longer answer to that question, then there is a recording of the talk I gave at the Global Gathering on the CCI website, and that will give you a longer answer. But just briefly here, I don't think we should be seeing creation care and evangelism as either or options within our Christian lives and ministries. We need to recognize that they're both important. And in fact, as we look into creation care, we'll see that it can actually enhance our evangelism, giving us opportunities to reach people that would otherwise be much harder to reach. So our desire to focus on evangelism generally comes from the importance of the Great Commission, right? But if we think about the Great Commission, that calls us to be disciples or to make disciples, not just converts. And disciples are followers of Christ. And if we're going to follow Christ in the way we live in the world that he made, 
will want to love it and care for it, just like he does. And don't forget the end of the Great Commission as well. We're not only called to make disciples, but also to teach them to obey everything that Jesus commanded us. And what did he command us? Well, he commanded us in Genesis to care for his creation, didn't he? And he never revokes that commandment throughout the rest of the Bible. And then Jesus summarizes his commandments really helpfully, helpfully for us um, in his ministry. And he summarizes them with those two greatest commandments of love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And when we start to think about it, we realize that we actually cannot claim to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength whilst we're living lives that are deliberately or carelessly destroying the beautiful world that he's made. And we cannot claim to love our neighbors whilst damaging the planet that they are relying on for the food they eat, the water they're drinking, clean air to breathe, and all the basic necessities of life. Millions of people around the globe are suffering due to environmental degradation. And as Christians called to love our neighbors, this should bother us and wake us up enough to call us to take action. Hmm. Oh, thank you. You said something in there about creation care enhancing our evangelism. I, I like that. How might that work in a camp setting? Yeah, well, today, the young people that come on our camps are becoming more and more aware of the ecological crisis that the world is facing. Many of them are actually suffering from what we now call eco-anxiety. That is a term now, eco-anxiety. And many young people are suffering from that because they know about the environmental problems and they realize that they're huge and often they seem really, really hopeless. Those young people need the hope that Christ can give them. But if they rub shoulders on camp with a form of Christianity that tells them that Christians believe God made the world, but that Christians don't care for it, mm. which is the message they'll get if we imply by not actively embracing creation care that we don't care, um, this will turn them right away from Christ and to all sorts of other forms of spirituality that can't save them. So we've got this really important opportunity, haven't we, as we welcome these young people onto camp to show them that we do care that we're not like those Christians that perhaps they've come across that don't seem to care, but that we, we do care and that Christians should care. So when these people come on camp, what we want to do is show them that we do care, start to um, care for God's creation alongside them. And then as we do that, we can be praying for opportunities to not only care for creation alongside them, but also introduce them to the creator who's the one who not only made the beautiful world, but wants a personal relationship with them and who can give them the hope that the, the ecological movement can't give them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so encouraging. Tell us about uh, CCI EcoCare. What's its purpose and how can it help those of us involved in Christian camping in the area of creation care? Yeah, well, CCI EcoCare has been set up to promote and encourage the care of God's creation within camp ministry in CCI. And firstly, what we're trying to do is to provide some sound theological teaching to help members of CCI see the biblical basis for creation care. If we're going to start incorporating creation care within camp ministry, we need a fresh mindset that recognizing that creation care is something that Jesus calls us all to do. So we need to start with the Bible. Paul said that we should be renewed in the attitude of our minds so that we can test and approve what God's will is. And that really is true in the area of creation care. We want CCI members to recognize that God is calling us to reassess how we treat the world that he's made and that his word makes it clear that creation care is an integral part of Christian living and worship for all of us. And so it should be a natural part of our ministries. But having said all that, if we do come to understand the theological basis for creation care and that it's really important, that doesn't necessarily help us to know where to get started and how we can actually 
do stuff that will make a difference. So CCI EcoCare is seeking to provide help in that area as well. We're wanting to give lots of practical ideas of steps that people can take in a camp setting to care better for God's creation. Mm. Oh, I like this. Yeah, keep going. Tell us more about it. Okay, I'm actually going to share screens at this point, because then I can not only tell you what's on offer, but show you some of what's on offer. Okay, so that this is the CCI website. It's the front page of, of the website. You can see the web address up there. And you'll see that on this top panel here, one of the tabs is the EcoCare tab. So I'm going to click on that one. And hopefully, it will go through. Oh, go on. Okay, there we go. Um, so under the EcoCare tab, we've got four additional tabs um, with different things here that can help you um, in the field of eco care. So first of all, this one will tell you about any upcoming sessions like this seminar that we're host hosting today that are happening so that you can get those in your diary and let people in your association know about those. Um, this tab here, the recordings tab, has got all the different talks that we've done in the past um, recorded there and you can listen to those and learn more from those. So I mentioned earlier that if you want to know more about the theology of creation care, there's a longer talk from the Global Gathering. You would find that under this tab. The final tab at the end there, the resources tab, um, has a number of books that you can read, that you know, recommended reading books um, that you could read yourself, that you could give as Christmas gifts for someone if you can get hold of them, and those will give you more of an insight into um, creation care. Um, the final tab is the assessment tool tab, and that's the one I want to focus on most today. So the assessment tool has four basic aims. The first one is that it will help you assess where you're currently at as a campsite when it comes to creation care. Next, the assessment tool aims to give you lots of ideas of things that you could be doing to help improve your care of creation. The third aim is to encourage you to make a commitment before God to think about and to keep on seeking to improve your care of God's creation. And the final aim is that filling in the assessment tool is actually the way you get to join the EcoCare scheme and you get an EcoCare certificate at the end. Okay, um, so you mentioned joining the EcoCare scheme. So is CCI EcoCare a formal accreditation scheme with standards to adhere to? And, and how difficult is it to achieve that EcoCare certificate you mentioned? Yeah, those are really good and really important questions. Um, the short answer is no, it's not a formal accreditation scheme. Um, we don't have the capacity to properly audit campsites to check for compliance. And we're working with campsites across the globe in really different settings. So it would be very hard to set a fair range of standards that would be appropriate for the range of campsites that we have across the globe. So instead of being a formal accreditation scheme, we are based on trust. And the overall aim is to encourage and to encourage those to get involved in creation care and to celebrate what camps are doing, not to make them feel bad about things that they're not doing. So you get to become a member of the scheme simply by completing the assessment tool and achieving the eco care certificate. And you asked whether it was hard to get that certificate. Well, there is a minimum score you need to achieve, but most campsites that have made a start in caring for creation will be able to achieve that minimum score. And if you don't, it's really not hard to um, look through the questionnaire, look for a couple of areas of things that you could implement on your campsite, get those going on your campsite, and then refill in the questionnaire and you'll get a higher score the next time, and then you should be able to get your certificate. Great, that makes sense. So, and so joining EcoCare and displaying that certificate in your camp is going to be well worthwhile as people across the globe are becoming increasingly environmentally aware. And they will want to know, that, you know what we're doing at our campsites to care for the environment. So for some groups, it's likely to even influence uh, where to book their camp. I guess what I'm saying is that creation care not only makes sense biblically, but it also makes good business sense as well. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. And it's really important that we remember that not all actions that we take to care for the environment cost money. 
Um, some of them actually save us money as well as caring for the planet. So if you're worried about your budget, then don't feel you can't improve your care of God's creation. You just need to look for the ways of caring for creation that don't cost a lot of money and the ways that help you save money. And of course, if caring for creation makes people more likely to book at your campsite, it will help you financially that way as well. Very good. Now, thank you for showing us the website. And I noticed that there's a downloadable PDF button right above the assessment tool. Is that the same as the assessment tool or is this something totally different? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. And I just realized that I never showed you the certificate. So there's the certificate um, that you can get if you um, complete the eco care assessment tool. And then going on to that page of the website, um, you can see there that the assessment tool is down below that frequently asked questions button. But here is the assessment tool PDF and a bit of writing that encourages you to download that PDF. Um, the PDF is actually exactly the same as the online tool. It's just um, a PDF version. You can't actually fill it in. Um, but the reason we've done that is because the online tool doesn't save your questions until you complete the whole thing. So if you go on to try and complete the online tool and you get halfway through and you come across a question that you don't actually know the answer to yet, and you have to go off and ask someone else on your campsite what the answer to that question is, when you come back to it, you might find that you've lost everything that you've done. And we would hate for that to happen to people because um, I know how frustrating that is. So the best thing to do is to download that PDF and go through, just read through all the questions, check you know the answers to them all. If there's any that you need to do a bit of research with someone else on your campsite to say, you know, what do we do in this area? Um, then you can find out all those answers. And when you're ready, then you go to the online tool. And then it will be quite quick to fill in. You should be able to fill in the whole of the online tool in about 30 minutes once you've done all that research. Okay, so just to be clear, like, why would a camp actually go through all the trouble of completing the online tool and joining CCI EcoCare when they can just use the ideas in the downloadable PDF to do their own thing in caring for creation? Just a question for you. Yeah, well, it would be possible to use the PDF that way and not bother joining EcoCare. Absolutely. And you would um, be caring for God's creation and, and we need to celebrate that. But you would miss out on the certificate, but that's not the really important thing. I mean, it would be a shame, but that's not the really important thing. The really important thing is that if you are a member of CCI and you don't join EcoCare, then you miss out on the opportunity of encouraging others within CCI in their creation care journey. One of the things that we can all do in caring for creation is encourage others to think about it by talking about it and by um, doing things ourselves. And joining the CCI EcoCare scheme is one way you can encourage others in the CCI family to join as well. Because as more camps join the scheme, it'll encourage those that haven't yet thought about it to take a look into it and think about joining too. Mm, yeah, and that's so much a part of why CCI exists, and that's to encourage each other and uh, to spur each other on in ministry. I like that. So how is the assessment tool structured? And can you give us some examples of what uh, different people are doing? Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's structured by giving you a series of questions in five different areas that relate to different areas of camp life. So there's the area of worship and teaching um, with a bunch of questions under that. Um, there's operation en and energy. So that's things like your buildings, your offices, um, how you're getting your power supply on your campsite, you know, basic things like that, your, whether you're insulating your buildings, those sorts of things. Um, water and cleaning, we all need to have toilet facilities and bathrooms on campsites. Um, and, you know, how are you treating the water there? Um, how are you saving water? Those sorts of questions. Catering and waste. Um, not everybody caters, but everybody does produce waste. And there's a whole bunch of questions um, relating to the food we eat there and to what we do with waste. Um, and then finally, for camps that do have land, there's the land management and conservation section. How are you um, looking after and managing the land that you're responsible for as a campsite? So, yeah, let's have a look at um, 
some photos from a few of the camps who've recently joined EcoCare. So here's some wonderful photos um, from Kenya, from Eden Thriving Camp. Well, look at these photos. I just love these photos. I mean, they speak for themselves, don't they? I don't even really need to, um, mm -hmm. to explain them. But you can see that on Eden Thriving Camp, they are getting kids out into God's creation and they are getting up close and personal with it. They're interacting with it. They're looking at it. They're learning about it. And so that comes very much into that worship and teaching section. They're doing a lot of teaching about, about God's creation with the kids that come on their camp. And then that bottom right-hand photo with the, the group of kids with their trees that they're ready to plant um, shows that they are thinking about how to care for the land. And that would be something that would come under the land management and conservation section of the assessment tool. They'd be able to say, yep, we're doing stuff to care for our land because with their kids there, they are um, not only teaching those kids, but they're actually practically getting involved in looking after God's creation. So that's a wonderful example from Kenya. That's just a few of the things that Eden Thriving Camp are doing. They're doing lots, lots more great stuff. Um, and it was yeah, a great delight to welcome them into the EcoCare scheme just a few weeks ago. Um, okay, this next camp, we do have the person that sent me these photos. So Heidi is here. So thank you, Heidi, for these photos. You can see in the top photos, there's um, windows there. Um, those are windows that Heidi's camp have recently double glazed. Um, and obviously double glazing is great for keeping the heat in, which reduces our energy consumption, which impacts our um, CO2 transmission uh, emissions and helps with climate change. So really great thing to be doing. And hopefully those new double glazed windows will be keeping those at Agaki Bible Camp warmer this winter. The photos on the left are two compost bins that the camp have recently or have introduced over the past little while. And Heidi, in her explanation of these photos to me in her email, said that many of the kids that are being shown that they can put food waste into in those compost bins have never come across this concept before. And they're just amazed that if they put their food waste into the compost bins, it breaks down and becomes nutrient rich soil that can be used to benefit the environment. And that's fantastic, isn't it? That they're not only dealing with their food waste in that way, but they're also teaching those kids who will go home and take that information back to their own families. So absolutely fantastic, crossing over both the teaching section of the questionnaire, but also the, the waste section. And then I just love that treehouse. I want to go and visit it. It looks so much fun. Um, and you can see that the kids are getting out into nature there. It's all built with local materials, natural materials. It's built in a way that doesn't damage any of the living trees. And you can also see there's a bird feeder on there. So they're attracting the local wildlife and the kids. And Heidi says kids of all ages. So, yeah, the grown-ups as well um, love that structure and can get out into nature and connect with God's creation there in a really beautiful way. So that's across in Japan. Thank you, Heidi, for those photos. And then coming back to South Africa, um, these photos are from the Busisa Family Adventure Retreat in KwaZulu-Natal. So that's quite far from where I am in South Africa. But these photos also show some really good things that people can be doing. So the photo on the left shows that they are getting campers out into creation. They're taking them out for walks through the natural environment. And those walks are quite fun and adventurous. To cross the river, you need the rope. It looks great fun to me. I've not visited Basisa yet, but I hope I will do one day. So again, that's the worship and teaching section. They're getting people out to interact with God's creation. But look at those top two photos. How simple is that? To get people to worship God out in the natural world. A simple cross on the top of a hill that becomes a destination to take your group to. And when you've got them there, you can worship in song, you can worship in prayer, you can do a teaching session, you can have a mini church service around the cross. It's just so effective and so simple to do. So again, that's something that would come into the worship and teaching section. The bottom photo there shows some really impressive solar panel arrays um, that are providing the electricity needs of Busisa Camp. And can you see that underneath the solar panels, they're collecting all the rainwater from that large roof in massive tanks. 
Um, so they're making the most of the water when it rains and they're needing to use less. Actually, I don't even know if they're connected to municipal water. They may not be at the CISA. Um, many camps in South Africa aren't. Um, so they're collecting that water and able to use water that God provides from the rain um, when the rain falls so that in the drier times they've got those tanks of water that can be fed into the areas where they need it. Okay, so that's um, Busisa, thank you to Geert who sent those photos in. I don't think he was able to join the call this afternoon. And then just a few other photos that I just um, popped in uh, that are from Philip Scott, where I am. Um, just basic things that people can be doing. You see up there, insulation. Insulation makes a massive difference. If we insulate our buildings, we need to use less heating in winter, less air conditioning or no air conditioning in summer and it's more comfortable for everyone. Insulation is not a big thing in South Africa, um, but we're from England, but living in South Africa. And so we um, made sure that when we um, set up our camp that we did make sure the, the buildings were well insulated and it makes a huge difference. Um, lighting. Replacing your light bulbs with energy saving light bulbs is a very simple thing that everyone can do. And it does work out cost, more cost effective in the end as well to use energy saving light bulbs. So that's a really simple thing that can be done. Saving water, putting signs up around your campsite to remind people that water is not just an unlimited resource, it's a precious resource. And even if you're in an area where there is lots of water, um, that water generally will have been treated by your local municipality or whatever you call it where you are, and the treating of water emits greenhouse gases. So if we use less of it, we will care for the environment better. So using less water is good, whatever situation you're in. And little signs around your camp to help people know that water is something that God gave us. And we shouldn't just let taps run when they don't need to. When you're brushing your teeth, you can turn the tap off. It saves water. I put this photo in because we all have to clean our campsites. And thinking about how we clean them is quite important. Not only what products do we use, are the products environmentally friendly products, but also are you buying products in small bottles that you have to keep buying more bottles, or are you finding a way to buy products in bulk in a large container that you can then decant into the small products for the cleaners to take around when they're cleaning the camp? Because that will reduce your waste as well as cleaning your waste as the water flows out from where you've been cleaning if you're using an environmentally friendly cleaning product. Um, at the bottom here, um, a reminder that recycling is a really good thing. And for many parts of the world, that's not too difficult to implement in some way. Um, and what about putting up signs about recycling that actually point to your motivation? So at Phillips Cobb, we've got these signs up that say at the bottom of the recycling sign that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So that people know that the reason we want them to recycle is not just because we're environmental people, but because we are caring for this planet that we believe belongs to God. Mm -hmm. um, so helpful to have signs, but also to use those signs to connect the dots between your Christian faith and the actions that you're trying to encourage people to take. You can see that this sign here that we have up in our cottages um, also encourages people to make eco bricks because all our guests join us in using their flexible plastic waste to stuff into bottles and make eco bricks from. And you can see um, on this photo what we do with some of our eco bricks. We make stools and we make games tables. So the kids can sit around on the stools that are made of eco bricks and play the finger push game on a games table that's made of 36 two litre bottles stuffed full of plastic that hasn't gone into landfill. It's gone into those bottles to make their games table. So that's definitely one that doesn't cost money at all. It just takes a little bit of time um, and it's a really good educational tool as well as dealing with some of your waste. Okay, so there's a bunch of um, ideas for you. Those are fantastic. Love seeing things just firsthand like that, how practical. And thanks for pointing out just how simple it can be too. Um, you know, just, just that simple cross at the top of the hill, what a powerful experience that can be. So it's not only eco-friendly, but 
it gets right to the core of our evangelism um, and bringing people to a space like that. That's a really great example for us. And you made me think of a story right here at the camp where I serve. Imagine the food that's produced for 55,000 guests per year. And when we moved several years ago to composting, it wasn't just the benefit of that nutrient rich soil that was being created that we repurposed into our gardens. It was a fact also that most of the food waste going out, a lot of the vegetables and fruits that are getting thrown away after being mostly consumed, um, it, it's water. And when we go to our landfill, they measure our truckload by weight. So we're, we're paying thousands of dollars to dispose of water. And so when we moved to um, composting, well, we saved all that money and then we created our own soil for our gardens. And it was just a real win-win across the board. So another example for you. But what, what about CCI members that run camp, but they don't have or own their own venue, you know, or venues that, you know, just host camps, um, you know, you know, what, what can they do in the way of eco care um, when you don't have a venue or provide yeah. your own meals? Yeah, no, that is a really important question because across the CCI family, we do have a range of different members. And there are, I mean, in Latin America, most of the CCI members run camps but don't own the sites. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the members that, you know, manage a site but don't actually run the camps. So they're not actually having much to do with the groups or doing any facilitation. There's places like us, we don't do any catering for our groups. It's self-catering, the groups cater for themselves. So we don't have much control over what the groups actually eat in the same way that a campsite that provides catering has more control over what they eat. So yeah, when we set up the assessment tool, we wanted to make it usable for everybody across the board, whatever your situation is. So when you fill in the questionnaire um, and everybody can fill it in, whatever your situation, everybody can fill it in. You just need to let us know what situation you fall in. So if you don't own a campsite, but you run camps, then tell us. Um, and every question you can answer not applicable to. So there's, you know, you might answer not applicable to a whole bunch of questions because you don't own land or something. Um, and we'll take that into account when we um, score your questionnaire. But the other thing to think about is that although you may not own a campsite yourself. If you're running a camp ministry, you've got to be based somewhere, whether you're based in your own home and that's your office or whether you have an office somewhere, that still is a building, isn't it? And that building still needs lighting and it still needs toilet facilities. And so you can answer those kind of questions from the perspective of perhaps your office space. Um, and perhaps your office space has some green space around it. And so you can answer some of the land questions on the basis of that green space, even if it's, you know, two by two meters by three meters, you know, it doesn't need to be big. You can still do stuff with a small space. So I think my my basic answer to that question is tell us your situation, but also think about how you can within your own life and within the life of your staff team do the most that you can do in caring for God's creation within the circumstances that you find yourselves in. Yeah, it sounds like even just getting a, a subtle mind shift is um, something to celebrate. You're just trying to get us focused and seeing the world in a new way. I really appreciate that. And, you know, CCI is a, a global ministry, as you know. So, you know, what about our members whose first language is not English, what are they to do with this assessment that's written in English? Yeah, well, first of all, I apologize to them because I'm not great at many other lang well, any other languages, actually. I'm one of those English people that doesn't speak um, other languages fluently at all. Um, so yeah, we are hoping to translate the assessment tool into French and Spanish. Um, so watch this space for those two languages. If you can think of another language that would be really useful for people in your association, and if you're able to help us with translation, then please just get in touch. We can translate that PDF quite easily into as many languages as need 
as we need to and put links to those onto the website. So please get in touch and we can make it as accessible to as many people as possible. Mm, oh, that sounds great. Now, every time I hear you share and I get more excited about getting involved here and I've you know, as CEO of CCI uh, worldwide, I want to support uh, this movement. I believe it's right. It's biblical. It's God's calling for us as um, camp managers and leaders. And so I find myself wanting to get m even more involved. And, and I'm guessing that there are others who are listening today or will listen to this seminar at another time and feel that same thing inside of them. They want to get involved with the assessment and join eco care, but even take it a step further. Like if someone wants to get more involved, can they and how? Well, yes, definitely. If you want to get more involved, I would love to hear from you. We're actually looking for um, people to serve as eco care reps. And our goal is to have at least one rep for each CCI association. So the role of a rep would be to act as an advocate for creation care within your region and to promote CCI eco care to the camps that are local around you in your association. Um, before you panic that that's a job that you don't have time for, becoming a rep won't be a massive time commitment. Um, it's one of those things that if you want to give loads of time to it, then great. But if not, then it doesn't need to take up too much time. It'll probably involve about three meetings a year on Zoom with all the other reps and the eco care um, team. Um, and then just trying to promote any um, eco care seminars like this one in your region and trying to encourage camps around you to fill in the assessment tool. And from experience, I know that people do need reminding a few times um, to help, you know, to help encourage them to get that assessment tool filled in. So just the odd WhatsApp or, or email to members to encourage them to actually go ahead and fill in the tool will be great. So if there's anyone who's listening to this who thinks they um, could get more involved and who would like to get more involved, then please do contact me or Vicky or Bill and um, let us know. And we would very happily have you on board. Thank you. Sounds great. And I'm really grateful for all of this good content and uh, just for your passion for caring for God's creation. Um, thank you for your leadership in this. And so I just want to open that up. If anyone has any questions, you, know, you can just jump right in or, and while someone's in the process, others can put it into the chat and we'll make sure we get to those as well. But anyone have a question for Anna? Hi, Anna. Vianne from, from Western Cape. Um, I was just wondering, in terms of the, the resources, you mentioned that there's plenty to find to uh, on the on the CCI website. Is that correct? Where we can go and find more resources as to how we can implement improvements? Is that correct? Um, yeah, there are some books on the resources page that you can learn more through reading. Um, the resources page could certainly be improved um, in terms of specific resources for how you go about doing different things. Um, and I think we will build on that in time. Um, so we are, uh, CCI EcoCare has become a partner with, or a friend, I think it's called, a friend of Arosha International. And Arosha International mm -hmm. is a Christian creation care organization, and they have masses of resources. So the reason that we built that friendship link was so that we could tap into their resources. They've just got a new person in post who's hoping to put their resources section of their website into order so that it's more accessible. Um, so I'll be keeping in close contact with them and then making that available to our members. So if anyone has any you know, specific things they want to know, then at the moment, probably the best thing is just to pop me an email and I'll see what I can do. But hopefully we can build up um, more information on that resources page. Uh, as time goes by, and we can put links into the resources that um, Arosha International have already, I mean, they've already got masses and masses of resources that will be really helpful for us. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, Thank Vian. you so much. Any last minute questions as we near the end of the hour here? This has been a really rich time. Okay. I know some are pushing the wee hours of the morning, so I want to respect that. Anna, thank you so much for 
all that you've done to prepare for this and all that you've done in the years prior um, leading up to this time and where God's going to take it. Um, just thank you for being open to his movement and leading in your life. But we really appreciate you and your expertise and your love for the Lord and for his land that he's created for us. Uh, we're joining you um, in that movement and grateful to serve that way. I'm going to ask on the spot here, Vicki, if you could uh, close out our time in prayer. How's that sound? That's up for it? Yes, I'm always up for that. That's great. All right. That's great. <laughs> uh, let's just pray. Dear Lord Henry Father, I do just thank you um, that we've been able to meet together and just think about uh, your creation, the, the world that we live in, and the things that we can do just to... Uh, make improvements and try to protect and save um, your world and we we are aware of the many ways that we have caused destruction and and damage and I pray Lord that you'll help us to to realize the importance of um, to protect uh, uh, and preserve your your world Lord and I pray that in each of our individual contexts whether that's in camps or within even our homes or organizations that you'll um, use this uh, eco care tool the assessment tool to just guide us and help us to find ways that we can um, uh, work to to make improvements in the way that we uh, live and the things that we do and father i just pray that you'll bless each one of us as we um, go back to our work and the things that we're doing lord and just pray that you'll keep this on our minds that we will be able to um just notice things that we can do to make improvements. I just pray um, that you'll be with each and every one of us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicki. And thanks Thank to each of you who joined in uh, on this seminar call. Grateful for your interest um, to learn more, uh, for your efforts. If you're already involved in doing things, you've got something valuable for all of us to, sh um, to share among the group. So um, please, as we offer these seminars, continue to join in on them, bring your ideas uh, that we can all grow from each other and learn. And uh, that's how we collectively as CCI worldwide are stronger together. So thank you for being a part of this. If you all of a sudden have a question, you can stay on the call. Um, Vicki and Anna will still be here. And for the rest of you that need to get on with your night or your day, um, please do so. But uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, take care. Bye. <laughs>